Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Here you have an insight glimpse of <clears throat> me trying to reuse tape. And I don't do it because tape is expensive. Please don't make fun of me. It's because um, it's already in like the exact shape that I need it. So I don't need to re-rip off tape and whatever. I just kind of stick it on the next piece of paper. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing here. But this one turned out to be a little more work than the others. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we are painting. What are we painting? Another fall scene, which I love. I'm just going to change out my water because it is yellow, which doesn't really matter because this one is also going to be yellow. But we are painting birch trees, which need to be white. So I guess we should change out the water. Anyways, first thing you want to do. Oh, this is inspired by Jean Lurson, by the way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw my birch tree um, silhouettes, I guess. So I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have a smaller one right beside it. And then I'm going to have a larger one a little bit to the right, like so. That looks good. And that's all you really need to do for that part because... Um, Actually, technically, you could take some tape. Oh, maybe I should do that. That would be so much easier. I just got a great idea. Okay, look. For people that ask what tape I use, it's just generic tape. Um, so I'm taking tape, and I'm going to rip it down the middle. And it naturally creates the, it's really hard to see, but it's obviously not a very even, uh, even rip. So I'm gonna just erase my pencil marks here. And stick this on. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these guys because if we just, basically if you have that, um, I think it's called masking fluid. If you have that stuff, then you can just forego what I'm doing right now and just use your masking fluid. But you know what? Not everyone has that. I definitely don't. I'm not interested in buying that or even sourcing it. I'm sure you can just get it at a at a craft store, but okay, so I ripped this one as well. It's a little bit smaller, thinner of a tree. Stuck it down. I don't know if you can see. Oh, there we go. In the when I kind of move the paper, you can see where those are placed. And because I ripped them, they kind of look uneven, which is perfect because trees are not perfectly straight. And this is going to make this so much easier because we're doing a lot of stippling in this one. So I'm going to start with the lightest color that I'm probably going to add white somewhere, but the lightest, lightest color that I plan to use. And just kind of going everywhere with it. And see what I mean about this being so much easier because if we had to you know, avoid it because uh, because we penciled it in and there wasn't tape, then we'd have to like really be careful. But because this is protected, we don't have to worry about that. Does that make sense? We can just go crazy. Okay. So I took, so far that's two yellows. Now I'm moving into like a yellow orange. Just going across. Now I'm moving into even more of an orange. And now 
an orange orange. Although I'm not a fan of how orange that turned out. Okay, so, oh, I actually used to have a stippling brush. You guys told me it was a stippling brush and I have no idea where it is. I could have totally used that. That would have been way more effective for this effect. But we're gonna let this dry. Um, so we have a bit of a background going for us and then we're gonna like really stipple on top. Okay, so I think this is dry. Um, <clears throat> sorry, what am I doing now? Uh, I really actually wish I had that brush. Oh well, oh well. I am going to take some yellowy orange for this and I'm dabbing it on a paper towel because I want to stipple it, which is what I'm doing now. See, I want to create the illusion of leaves. And I'm going to pick up some brown. As well. I kind of want to paint little leaves on too, just have a little bit of definition in this painting, but we'll get there eventually. bit of maroon would be nice. This is probably not good for your brush, by the way. I'm just gonna say that if you have a brush you really like, don't use it because it will ruin the, the tip, the bristle tips. But I already have a replacement for this brush because it's like four years old, I think. Um, so I'm just kind of using this one up until I can't anymore. Um, so I'm just a, putting a little disclaimer there. Now, I am really tempted to paint on some actual, you know, nice leaves. sticking out in some areas. And I mean, this is just the background. So you don't, don't worry about making it look perfect. Or if you're looking at this and you're wondering, wow, this looks like a toddler painted it. Just know that I feel exactly the same way in about half of my paintings. Uh, but also it's supposed to look that way because the background is not supposed to be well defined in this particular painting because the focus is going to be the birch trees that we end up painting. So just save your um, tears for the birch trees <laughs> because uh, if you have any experiences like I do with these, then you'll probably mess those up too. No, <laughs> no don't. I didn't say that. You know, sometimes I just speak without thinking. I shouldn't even say sometimes, it's all the time. Uh, but I think I am okay with this because like I said, the background is not that important. If you want to have some extra fun, you can't, no, actually we'll do that later. Pretend I didn't say anything. So now is the fun part. We are going to take the tape and peel it off and it'll reveal a beautiful canvas for us to define our birch trees. Did I say pine trees before? Because I feel that that is very likely. Uh, obviously I meant pine trees. 
Now, the thing I don't like is that one side of the tape was straight, so the tree is straight. Um, we can adjust that to an extent in this step, but one further step you can take at the beginning is just tearing the other side of the tape as well, and then you'll have like a more uh, natural looking tree line. So just keep that in mind. Um, so we're going to be now switching to just black watercolor for a bit. So I have black on my paintbrush, I have a liner brush, and the way we can kind of adjust this really straightness of this birch tree is um, I'm just painting a little bit, like a, a jaggedy line that has a lot of missing parts and some of it goes a little bit onto the colored part and some of it goes a little bit onto the white part. So um, I hope that made sense. But by doing that, you're kind of creating an uneven look. I have to change my water out because it's making my tree yellow. And I don't want that, obviously. Also, my brush is just very yellow, so I have to rinse it better. Um, so... So with, I have, by the way, so many birch tree tutorials on my channel. It's like so many different techniques, bird's eye view, like everything. Um, so if you have a particular style that you, or you're like just learning how to paint birch trees, so you're still trying to figure it out, please go check out. I should probably make just like a playlist of just tree themed um, paintings. Maybe I will do that. We'll see. Otherwise, you can look through, you'll find what you need to. But um, you want to add these veiny parts that go around the knots, like so. And then I'm taking a brush that's just been dipped in water and uh, going over some of these areas. And I'm not being very meticulous about it. I'm just plopping down some water and picking up some of that black, which kind of turns into a gray. And that doesn't look very good right now, but I, I don't want to say I promise, but it probably will look a little better when we're done. Um, we also cannot forget to add uh, what can't we forget to add? The branches coming off the birch trees because those are, those add an equal amount of beauty and realism to pine tree, sorry, birch trees. So I'm just jumping on to my second tree here I should probably watch some of my own birch tree tutorials because I I'm kind of out of practice here these are not looking as hot as I would like them to And you can always go over um, what you've painted. That kind of looks like an eye. <laughs> uh, you can go over what you've painted a second time once the first kind of smudge has dried to add a little bit more definity. 
that a word? I don't know. Sometimes I say things and and I just wonder, you know. I just wonder. So see, now I'm just going over some of those areas, make them a little darker. smudge those as well so okay yikes I don't know this does not look how I wanted it to look <laughs> uh, maybe add a little bit of specklage along the tree I really need to watch my own tutorials on birch trees. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is add uh, those branches, which are gonna make the birch trees more lifelike. So I like to have some of them emerging from the knot in the tree. Somebody once told me a really cool fact about the knots of birch trees or birch trees in general, and I already forgot what it was. You guys are so full of knowledge. It was a viewer of mine. Um, so if that was you, please feel free to say it again on this video. Because uh, I always think it's really fascinating. I wouldn't overdo it, maybe like one per, one or max two per tree but you do whatever you want, it's your tree. <clears throat> I don't know, something's not really tickling my fancy here. Something's not right with this tree, with these trees. Well, what are you gonna do? Can't do very much. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to Speckle Town for a bit and just speckle around, add a little bit more razzle dazzle, spickle spackle on top of these trees actually I like what I did with the uh, the little leaves so I'm gonna have those leaves leaf sections overlapping some of the birch trees And as a final little thing, I'm gonna take brown and do a little bit of the uh, 
of that. Tapping my brush against another brush to speckle it up. And I think I'm okay with that. It's not exactly how I pictured that this would turn out, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, there's just something off about those birch trees. And I can't let go of it for some reason. I'm kind of temp tempted because I have acrylic, white acrylic paint here to, uh, excuse me, oh my gosh, to take it and fix some of this whiten it up a little bit because they're far too dark for birch trees I think <clears throat> I don't know if this is doing very much I'm gonna just stop. I don't think that's doing very much. If anything, I should be adding more black. Oops. What have I done to this poor tree? Yeah, I'm gonna stop before I ruin this. And then I keep going. I can't stop. Okay, we're going to stop there. Truly, truly, we're going to stop there. Thank you very much for watching this one. Let me know what you think of this one. Probably not one of my best Birch Tree tutorials, but it's a tutorial nonetheless. Let me know what you think. Comment, subscribe, hit like, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.